Good evening. This is Akash Mani and I am Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the news at 9. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says continual rise of FDI in the country reflects success of Make in India campaign. In his Man Ki Baat, Prime Minister urges people to continue participating in cleanliness drive until it becomes a nature. Campaigning for third and final phase of assembly elections ends in Jammu and Kashmir. Voting to take place on Tuesday. Security forces kill one terrorist in Kathua district of Jammu and Kashmir. Operation underway. Heavy rains wreak havoc in Nepal. Over 130 people killed and 64 missing due to flood and landslides. Another Hezbollah commander, Nabil Kaok, killed in Israeli airstrike in Beirut. And in cricket, test match between India and Bangladesh washed out due to rain. Prime Minister Modi addressed the 114th edition of Monkey Bath on Akashwani today. Speaking during his monthly broadcast, the Prime Minister said, India has become a manufacturing powerhouse due to the Make in India initiative. He said the poor, the middle class and MSMEs are getting a lot of benefit from this campaign and it has provided an opportunity to people of every class to showcase their talent. Mr. Modi urged the people to buy Make in India products during the coming festive season. Today, Bharat is become a manufacturing powerhouse and because of the country's strength, the world is on us. There are automobiles, textiles, aviation, electronics, या फिर डिफेंस हर सेक्टर में देश का एक्सपोर्ट लगातार बढ़ रहा है देश में एफडीआई का लगातार बढ़ना भी हमारे मेक इन इंडिया की सफलता की गाथा कह रहा है ड्यूरिंग द प्रोग्राम द प्राइम मिनिस्टर हाईलाइटेड द सक्सेस ऑफ स्वच्छ भारत मिशन व्हिच इज गोइंग टू कंप्लीट 10 इयर्स ऑन द सेकंड ऑफ नेक्स्ट मंथ मिस्टर मोदी अर्ज द पीपल टू टेक पार्ट इन द क्लीनलीनेस कैंपेन स्वच्छता को लेकर जारी अभियान से हमें ज्यादा से ज्यादा लोगों को जोड़ना है ये जब तक हमारा स्वभाव बन जाए स्वच्छता तब तक करने का काम है मेरा आप सबसे आग्रह है कि आप भी अपने परिवार दोस्तों पड़ोसियों या सहकर्मियों के साथ मिलकर स्वच्छता अभियान में हिस्सा जरूर लें द प्राइम मिनिस्टर पॉइंटेड टू अ चेंजिंग डायनेमिक्स ऑफ जॉब्स विद इमरजेंस ऑफ न्यू सेक्टर्स He said the Minister of Information and Broadcasting has started 25 challenges under the theme Create in India in order to promote talent and creativity. In today's Man Ki Baat, Prime Minister Modi said this episode is especially emotional for him as the program is completing 10 years on the 3rd of October. Prasar Bharti Chairman Navneet Sehgal has expressed gratitude to Prime Minister Narendra Modi for appreciating Prasar Bharti, All India Radio and Doordarshan in his Man Ki Baat address on Akash Fani. In a social media post, Mr. Sehgal said, the Prime Minister's appreciation is an inspiration and motivation for Prasar Bharti, Doordarshan and All India Radio and all its employees. He said they are proud to be associated with Mr. Modi in taking his resolve of nation building to the masses. Prime Minister in his Man Ki Baat mentioned about Mr. Subramanian, 74 years old from Kori Kot, Kerala, who is repairing and making chairs usable again. This man has repaired more than 23,000 chairs and thus made them reusable again. Mr. Subramanian shares his happiness with Akash Fani News. I am happy to be mentioned in the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Man Ki Baat. I repair all the chairs. I started working at the age of 16. I am now 74 years old. I also go to the houses and repair chairs. I repair chairs at civil station, PWD, LIC and BSNL offices. I have a wife and four children. I feel very happy today. During the program, PM Modi also highlighted the participation of women in the water conservation. Talking to Akashwani News, the women of, of the group from Simrawari village of Jhansi district said, people used to witness the scarcity of drinking water in summers, but they decided to work collectively for the rejuvenation of the river. मेरा नाम दीपा मजुमदार है प्रधानमंत्री को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद महिलाओं क्या नहीं कर सकती तो मुझे बहुत खुशी हुई आज हम लोगों ने जब देखा ये लाइक और इससे ये फायदा हुआ कि 18 बहनों ने हम लोग काम किया और इसमें जो आसपास की खेती है 25 एकड़ 30 एकड़ जो किसानों की जमीन है ठहरा हुआ पानी पाइप से वो ले जाएंगे खेती में अपना काम लेंगे 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi today laid the foundation stone, inaugurated and dedicated various projects in Maharashtra worth over 11,200 crore rupees via video conferencing. He inaugurated the Pune Metro section from the district court to Swar Gate, marking the completion of phase one of the Pune Metro Rail project. We have more from a correspondent. The Prime Minister also laid the foundation stone for the Swargate Katras extension of the Pune Metro. Addressing the occasion, he highlighted various projects and stated that Pune, the land of inspiration for great personalities, is witnessing a new chapter in Maharashtra's development. He emphasized the need to make cities like Pune centers of progress and urban development. The Prime Minister underscored the pivotal role of women's leadership in societal transformation. He paid tribute to Maharashtra's legacy of women's empowerment, particularly the efforts of Savitri Bai Phule, who initiated the movement of women's education. Ankita Apte, Akashwani News, Mumbai. In Jammu and Kashmir, the campaigning for the third and final phase of assembly elections ended this evening. More than 39.18 lakh voters are eligible to exercise the electoral franchise during the third and last phase of the assembly elections to be held on the 1st of October across 40 assembly constituencies in seven districts of the Union Territory. Elaborate security arrangements have been put in place for smooth, peaceful and incident-free polling. Out of 40 assembly seats, 24 seats in Jammu and 16 in North Kashmir, likely to witness an intense face-off between arch-rival Bharti Janta Party and Congress in Jammu, while in Kashmir, India Alliance NC Congress candidates will face Jammu Kashmir People's Conference and Awami Ithad Party. Democratic Progressive Azad Party of Glam Nabi Azad also fielded candidates but is fighting as an independent candidate. The Election Commission of India has set up 5,060 polling stations across seven districts of Kupwara, Baramula, Bandipura, Udampur, Samba, Kathua and Jammu for smooth and hassle-free voting by the eligible electors. As many as 1.94 lakh youth between the age 18 to 19 years to exercise their franchise in this phase. This is Anil Gulshandrana for Akashwani News from Jammu. BJP National President Jagat Prakash Nadda today addressed the Jan Ashirwad rally in Rohatak in support of party candidate Renu Dabla from Kalanor Assembly constituency and party candidate Manish Grover from Rohatak Assembly constituency. He said that the BJP is known for development works. Mr. Nadda also addressed an intellectual conference in Panchkula. He said that in these 10 years development work worth 2,70,000 crore rupees has been done in Haryana. Congress leader Kumari Selja also addressed a workers' conference in Raipur Rani block of Panchkula and boosted the morale of Congress workers. She also appealed to the people of the area to ensure the victory of MLA Pradeep Chaudhary from Kalka. LGPR President Chirag Paswan has said that his party will contest Jharkhand Assembly elections. Talking to reporters in Bokaru, Mr. Paswan said, talks with allies is underway. If positive results come, then party will contest with NDA, otherwise LGP will fight elections on its own. Chirag Paswan said final decision will be taken after meeting with state leaders in this regard. हम लोग आगामी झारखंड में होने वाले विधानसभा चुनाव में कि हम लोग तैयारी कर रहे हैं चुनाव हम लोग लड़ेंगे गठबंधन के तहत हम लोग चुनाव लड़ते हैं या अकेले हम लोग चुनाव लड़ते हैं ये बातचीत हो रही है मुझे लगता है नोटिफिकेशन जब तक आएगा तब तक ये तमाम बातें तय कर लेंगे in Jammu and Kashmir, a terrorist was killed today in an ongoing operation in a remote village in Kathua district, taking the death toll in the incident to two. Akashwani Jammu correspondent reports that the body of the terrorist was recovered from the scene of the encounter at Kog Mandli in Bilawar Tehsil of Kathua district this afternoon. During the encounter, Head Constable Bashir Ahmed laid down his life and two officers, a DSP and an assistant sub-inspector, were injured in the encounter. Another encounter has started between terrorists and security forces in Thana Mandi subdivision of Rajori district today. A Jammu correspondent reports that an exchange of fire took place between militants and security forces in Manihal Gali area of Thana Mandi subdivision of Rajori district in the evening today. As per reports, two to three terrorists are believed to be trapped in the area. More details are awaited. This is Akashwani giving you the news for quick news updates around the clock. Follow us on our X handle at AIR News Alerts. <music> Nepal's Home Ministry has confirmed that 132 people have died due to flood, landslide, inundation and natural disaster incidents. 
The ministry said that so far 68 people have been killed due to disaster incidents in Kathmandu Valley, 45 in Bagmati province, 17 in Koshi province and 2 in Madhesh province. Similarly, 64 people have gone missing and 61 have sustained injuries due to the disaster-related incidents. 3,626 people have been safely rescued throughout the country with the active participation of the security forces. In Bihar, several incidents of breach and seepage have been reported on embankments due to pressure of flood water in Supol, West Champaran, Sitamari and Shibhar districts. High pressure has been witnessed on embankments following the massive discharge from Kosi and Gandak barrages. More than 1.5 lakh people have been affected by flood after massive discharge of water from two major barrages of the state. Meanwhile, the centre has assured all possible assistance to the Bihar government to tackle the crisis of flood. Union Minister of State for Home Affairs Nityananda Rai today reviewed the flood situation in Bihar at Patna. I want to हर परिस्थिति में बिहार में बाढ़ से प्रभावित लोगों को सहयोग के लिए रेस्क्यू करने के लिए पूरी सज्जा सामानों से सुसज्जित एनडीआरएफ बिहार सरकार से लगातार संपर्क में है एसडीआरएफ भी एनडीआरएफ के साथ काम कर रही है नॉर्थ सिक्किम इज एक्सपीरियंस इज फर्स्ट स्नोफॉल ऑफ द सीजन मच अर्लियर देन एक्सपेक्टेड अलोंग विद हैवी रेन्स दैट हैव ट्रिगर्ड मल्टीपल लैंडस्लाइड्स इन सेवरल एरियाज the Indian Meteorological Department, IMD, has issued a red alert predicting heavy to very heavy rainfall over the next two days. In the past 24 hours, Sikkim received 102 millimeters of rainfall, with Mangan, Sotang and Gyalsing districts being the worst affected. The Supreme Court is slated to hear tomorrow the Suomoto cognizance of the rape and murder of a junior doctor at the state-run R.G. Kar Medical College and Hospital in Kolkata. As per the cause list published on the Supreme Court's website, a three-judge bench headed by CJI D.Y. Chandrachur will resume hearing the case Suomoto on September 30th. The Israeli military has announced that a strike in Beirut killed Hezbollah chief Hassan Nasrullah and eliminated more than 20 other members of the Lebanese armed group. A Dubai correspondent has filed this report. According to Israeli Defense Forces, 20 other members of the Lebanese armed group of varying ranks were present at an underground headquarters in Beirut located beneath civilian buildings where they were managing Hezbollah's operations against Israel. Reports also indicate that Hezbollah leader Nasrallah's body has been recovered from the strike site marking a potential turning point in the conflict. IDF also confirmed a successful strike against Nabil Kwak, another high-ranking Hezbollah official. The Israeli operation in Beirut also resulted in the death of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps deputy commander. In response, Iran's Foreign Minister Abbas Arkachi issued a statement declaring that the deputy commander's death will not go unanswered, signaling a possible escalation between the tensions between Iran and Israel. Meanwhile, the IDF continues its operation in Gaza where forces have uncovered and dismantled a kilometer-long underground tunnel network. Vinod Kumar for Akashwani News from Dubai. In cricket, the play on day three of the second test between India and Bangladesh and Kanpur has been called off due to wet outfield. Overnight rain has also delayed the start on the third day of the weather hit second test. The entire second day was washed out yesterday without a ball being bowled. Early on day one, put into bad Bangladesh, 107 for the loss of three wickets. The hosts are leading the two-match series 1-0 after defeating the visitors by 280 runs in the first test in Chennai. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says continual rise of FDI in the country reflects success of making in their campaign. In his monkey bath, Prime Minister urges people to continue participating in cleanliness drive until it becomes our nature. Campaigning for the third and final phase of assembly elections ends in Jammu and Kashmir, voting to take place on Tuesday. Security forces killed one terrorist in Kathua district of Jammu and Kashmir, operation underway. Heavy rains wreak havoc in Nepal, over 130 people killed and 64 missing due to flood and landslides. And the Hezbollah commander Nabil Kaok killed an Israeli airstrike in Beirut. And in cricket, test match between India and Bangladesh washed out due to rain. And that is all in the news at 9. Good night.